Hi, this is Professor Cummings. I want to do a short presentation on quality control. In this case, I want to actually talk about statistic process control, or SPC. It's a, a really important as far as manufacturing goes, a way of controlling quality. It's a very predictive way of dealing with any issues, allows the operator to address any issues before they get out of control. So let's go ahead and discuss this a little bit. So what you see there is just a picture of a part on a lathe getting turned down. You know, it's got a control diameter. And if we were going to actually manufacture these in large quantity, large amounts, and we had a, a known tolerance that we wanted to keep those set diameters to, what we would find is that there would be a certain amount of variation coming off from part to part. You know, just due to natural variation in any manufacturing process. You know, so we'd have a, a target or a nominal dimension that we were trying to achieve and then due to engineering specifications being able to make the part run properly whatever the end product happens to be we would have a tolerance an upper and lower limit that would be acceptable but as we tried to get to that target as we try to get to that ideal diameter for that part being turned on the lathe we'd still see variation so there will always be a natural variation some random variation in any type of a process now, somebody who discovered this and tried to figure out a way to utilize this in dealing with quality was a, st a statistician named Short back in the early 20th century. He came up with the idea of using statistics to control the quality in a process. Basically, if you knew that a part was or a process had a natural variation to it, and that it was actually going to continue through this natural variation and you knew how much that variation could be that you could control the quality when that process started drifting into unnatural variations when something sort of happened that didn't fit that natural variation you could actually say okay let's let's stop the process and let's make an adjustment to it now that natural variation that would happen if you collected enough data points would actually form a bell curve also known as the normal distribution and this is what it looks like down here at the bottom part of the screen is just the, the natural variation or the normal distribution of a process that's going through its uh, natural variation so everything seems to gravitate towards this center here which will be the nominal or the mean and it goes out a certain amount which would typically be three standard deviations on both sides and within this uh, plus or minus three standard deviations known as three sigma plus or minus that's where you would find that 99.7 percent of your population is going to land so let's look at this a little bit more so let's say we have a process we have a, a target or a nominal variation we've got an upper and lower spec and we just start collecting the data on the that say that lathe application as we collect more and more data what we'd find is that we would form a normal distribution you know so we'd end up seeing gradually we develop a bell curve you know so we would end up having a bell curve that gravitated around the nominal it would fit well within the or it should fit well within the upper and lower specification and it would actually have a variation of plus or minus three sigma that the that we could actually hold the population in and again still holding on to 99.7 percent of that population would fall within this band would fall between those two lines Now we could use that and, and form a histogram the histogram or a bell curve would help us understand that normal distribution or that you know that natural variation of a process as we continue to manufacture more and more parts you know and be able to say okay everything that we're going to make off of this process should fall within in this bell curve should fall within that upper and lower control limit and still be well within tolerance but it'll all still gravitate towards the mean so there is you have the, the normal distribution the bell curve and this is a formula so this mean you know it still should still line up with your target or your normal distribute or your your nominal uh, uh your your norm your nominal your nominal dimension and you'll be able to take the standard deviation or how much variance there is average variance for the the process 
and still line up with your your bell curve you know and demonstrate your your natural your your normal variation now let's take this a step further and this is what Schuart really started to develop a good idea so he has this idea you know whether it's an idea or this concept of your variation happening within plus or minus three sigma that's going to capture the overwhelming majority of your data now if you were to take this same data instead of just collecting it as a, a histogram and turn it over you know counter or turn it over clockwise 90 degrees and lay it out to where you have your upper and lower specification limit you know an upper spec limit the con upper control limit lower control limit lower spec limit you still have this target amount and you were just to graph this with time you could develop something called a control chart so control chart you're actually now measuring those same parts off of your lathe you know it's in regular intervals you know set intervals over time you know showing this along this is going with time so this chart is is tracked across time and you end up with a control chart now the benefit of the control chart is it can help you detect out of control conditions so you can see in this chart you've got several parts that fell outside the control limits still within specification that we're able to actually detect as the process moves along so even though these parts are still within spec they're still within specification the the end user would still have a technically have a good part this is enough information for the operator to know say hey, something is wrong with my process I need to do something to make some kind of an adjustment to get things back in order now considering the fact that these are considered these are this is a, a normal distribution that we're looking at and these are now out of control we can attribute anything going out of control or any type of odd situation that doesn't appear to follow this random normal variation as two things one we can call it a special cause you know so it's just a chance event that happens to be going on inside of our process so so they're random events with no trends or pattern which encompasses 99.7 percent of what you see and then there's assignable causes so some sort of cause or event that actually can be traced to a specific change or event so these things may represent you know a chip inside of our workpiece or inside of our, our work holding device we may see variation due to machine maintenance it could be a bad bearing causing things to drift we could have a tool being worn down so we're not being able to cut down the the normal amount off of our part and not able to take off the same amount of material there could be some adjustment to the tool after the operator uh, made a tool change there could be several things that could end up causing these things to go out of control and this control chart is a visual way for you to be able to see how these variations are changing so if we take this control chart and we start considering all the different uh, things that could happen to the process we can start to actually realize there's a pattern to when things start going out of control and what we can see is that there are actually seven out of control conditions seven out of control conditions where we can start detecting that there's a problem with the process so you can look at this first one here of these in this chart you've got a process that's actually in control and it's just represented by the random variance variation of the part you know from part to part but then you've got these other seven circumstances other seven charts and each one of them represents some sort of out of control condition and each one of them also represents a parts that are in a lot of cases are still well within the specification limit so here you have a cyclical effect so something is happening and causing this part to drift back and forth cyclically or your pro your part variation to go into some sort of cyclical pattern even though you're still making good parts it's important to understand these out of control conditions specifically because so many of them are still within specification you know in this case you've got a total lack of variability which could indicate some type of problem here you've got you know, what we just saw the last time parts out of out of control outside the control limits here you have runs that appear something else is going on you know all of these sort of indicate some sort of a problem that the operator you know, or the quality control department needs to actually look into and say hey why is this going on these aren't normal these are no longer normal distribution there's something very unusual taking place here 
Now, something that goes along with this control chart. This control chart actually looks at the difference between the actual measurement of the part. So this is one part, each dot represents a part or a group of parts and you know how you're measuring it on this control chart. Over here you've got something called a run chart. A run chart tends to supplement your typical control chart and it has an ability to show you how the parts are starting to vary in major jumps. So if you want to get a quick read for what's going on in the system, you can't gather the same amount of uh, issues with maintenance or other things that might be going on with the process. But what you can get with, from a run chart is if there's a, some sort of dramatic shift or if there's a shift at all that might tell you that one part became out dramatically different from the other, you should be able to see it show up on this chart very quickly and also use this as an opportunity to react. So this is a, just a very rough overview of control charts and statistical process control. So it'll give you some idea of what the, the origins of them were, why they use them, and some of the out of control conditions. Uh, if this video was helpful to you, go ahead and like it. I plan to do videos probably twice a week, and most likely twice a week. I also put daily updates on my Facebook page. Both of those are in the, in the low bar. Also in my uh, Google Plus page, and I also have a Twitter account like everyone else these days. <laughs> so if you like these videos and they're useful to you, go ahead and, and, and subscribe to my channel, and I'll make sure I update them on different um, manufacturing and engineering topics. Thanks a lot for watching the video.